Hi, I'm Jenny Hutchinson from the Hyde Collection located in Glens Falls, New York. This week, we're introducing a new game called Guess the Silhouette. So earlier today, we released a image of a silhouette on our Facebook page. And we also provided images of a room that this object or uh, shape is located in. And then throughout the day, participants could guess what filled that shape. So this evening, I'm sharing what the answer to that silhouette is. This week's silhouette is a sculptural work by artist Malvina Hoffman. This artwork is titled Fragment from Russian Dancers. Malvina Hoffman was an American sculptor that was encouraged from a young age to become an artist. She gravitates to sculpture because it provided her with a sense of freedom and energy that only a three-dimensional artwork could capture. Like many artists of the early 20th century, she eventually moves to Europe and that's where she continues to grow her practice. There she worked as a studio assistant for another Hyde Collection artist, Janet Scudder, and eventually was invited to study with Auguste Rodin. When Melvina first arrives in London, she attends the ballet and is captivated by the movement of the dancers. Hoffman then becomes internationally famous for her sculptures of Russian ballet dancers. Her works are celebrated for their intense and detailed approach that placed her on even footing with male sculptors of the age. This work, as the title suggests, is a fragment of this famous body of work. Yet, even without the completed form, with her attention to detail, we can imagine the movement that this dancer might be in mid-action of, and we're able to complete the form. Perhaps this dancer is mid-pose or captured in a slow transition with the missing leg moving from bent to extension to complete a backward step, or maybe the dancer is shifting weight from one leg to another, and this is mid kind of quick surge in forward motion. These works are celebrated by the National Academy and Paris Salon and launches and cements Malvina's presence on the world stage. With respect to our current times and conversations, it's important to mention here that Malvina has another famous body of work, and that is a series of bus heads and life-size figures called the Races of Mankind. This body of work was commissioned by Stanley Field for the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago and was created to provide an accurate portrayal of people from diverse nationalities and races. Melvina travels all around the world to find her models and photographs them, and it takes her about five years to complete this project. Though at first this was celebrated as a diverse portrait of mankind, later the bronzes came under great scrutiny given the inaccurate view of race provided by science at the time that they were created. It had been believed at the time that physical characteristics of a person perhaps explained differences of behavior between race. By 1969, this was no longer an appropriate view and was completely dispelled by science, and that is when the Field Museum removed these sculptures from display. In 2016, the Field Museum reevaluated these sculptures and placed 50 of them in display in an exhibition called Looking at Ourselves, Rethinking the Sculptures of Melvina Hoffman. This exhibition directed new conversations, one that explored Hoffman's artistry and inspiration to celebrate different cultures of people, yet also provided views of scientific racism her skills were unfortunately utilized to display. By recognizing this aspect of the work, the museum led and encouraged new conversations about how this viewpoint, though dispelled by science, is still part of our lives today. Additionally, as part of this 2016 exhibition, the museum scoured through Melvina's records and restored the names and identities to her models of her sculptures. Through this action, her model's individualism and humanity was restored. Hoffman's writings also revealed, as we can imagine given her dedication to her life as an artist, was also much more personal than first presented. Her attention to detail and form was mirrored in her research to create her sculptures. She interviewed her models as she photographed them, and through this intense research, she found inspiration to capture her model's essence in a three-dimensional form. Though our sculpture at the Hyde Collection is only a fragment of the full series from the Russian ballet dancers, we also see this devotion reflected in her sculptures of her ballerinas. In Europe, a new field of scholarship is opening up in which scholars are examining surviving records to learn more about the communities of non-European peoples that congregated in port cities like Antwerp and Amsterdam, 
as Europeans established colonies across the globe. This new field of scholarship, as well as new discussions about an artist's entire body of work, may one day reveal the name of models, as we find in our collection of Head of the Moor by Peter Paul Rubens. So there we go. There's the answer to our guest's silhouette for today. And I'm looking forward to meeting with you all next week when I'll have a new silhouette and a new shape, and we'll have a new conversation about an object from our collection. See you next week. Bye.